today's technology good or bad for democracy? Well, hmm, tough question, bud. Uh... Absolutely more a positive than a negative. I'm Ryan LeBee, I'm 27 years old. I'm active duty military, that's my day job, but I'm also a filmmaker. I'm Penny Schuster, and I'm 34 years old. I teach college, and I'm writing my dissertation. I'm learning that the essence of democracy is discussion. And up until recently, those discussions, they have been the domain of journalists and politicians and professionals, and the average person has been kind of relegated to just consume. Technology has allowed us to take those discussions back. I feel that with technology becoming more and more available, it actually makes it easier to manipulate the democracy. Why do they need campaign money? They need it to pay for advertising and to tell you what you want to hear. Now, how do they know what you want to hear? It's this wonderful thing called algorithms. Fucking algorithms. Look at websites like Facebook, which are facades for data mining operations. They sell information of their users to corporations and to governments to the highest bidder. A lot of my friends that I speak to are very concerned about the fact that we give away so much information about ourselves very freely, but we don't think about what the consequences of that might be and how much power we're giving to someone else. A few years ago, I had a phone call from the U.S. Department of Commerce. They knew my name, they knew where I worked, they had my office number, they knew what classes I taught. How in the hell did they know all that? This is Ishan from India. I'm 25 years old. I recently graduated from Cornell University with my master's in law and I'm practicing law in India now, which happens to be the largest democracy in the world. Is technology good or bad for democracy? Well, I think it's kind of like a catch-22 situation. This is what democracy looks like! The pros could be that it's easier for people who are trying to garner public opinion or raise awareness about a certain issue or bring about a protest or a revolution or anything to disseminate ideas more effectively using various technological mediums. You know, people from all different parts of the country can hear one another and feel supported in their quests for what they want to demand as a society. You know, Facebook, Instagram, all this stuff. I'm, I'm, I've never been closer to people from across the world. Because of that, we can all come to a better consensus of how we think life should be. My name is Stephen Parton. I'm from Portland, Oregon. I'm 28 years old and a writer and a web developer. I comment often on the fact that the reason we've seen so many human rights in the last few years, things like Yes All Women, things like Black Lives Matter, the rainbow flags, the flags for France during the Paris attacks, these things are all a sign of a global community being formed. The idea that we're really struggling with here is are we going to shape technology or is technology going to shape us? And ultimately, this is not just a question uh, about democracy. This is a question about capability. Does the public, do you know regular individuals have the capability uh, and the impetus to actually achieve change? I know I sit at home sometimes and I will comment on a controversial subject on Facebook or like it and I feel better for doing it even though I've done absolutely nothing to change the situation. My name is Asil. I am from Almaty, Kazakhstan. I have a background in computer science and human-computer interaction. You can refer to any classics of the world. You can refer to all those great philosophers and read ancient Greek plays. And you will see that people are still the same. So we have still the same passions and desires, still the same scares and all those bad and good features of our hackers that we had before. So in that sense, we need to remember that progress changes on the, the level of information that we get, but it doesn't necessarily change our human nature. Of course, technology is just a tool. How we use that tool can build people up or knock them down. And I think we're still trying to figure that out. And we're still kind of in that infancy stage. Everyone's all excited, but now it's like, okay, here we are. What are we going to do with it? I think the technology will be extraordinary if we guide it with thought and we need to consistently be thinking, you know, does this serve me? Does this serve us as a whole? Because the bottom line of it is, whether the guy down the street that you completely disagree with, his candidate wins or your candidate wins, whoever wins, it's up to both of you to make sure democracy works works using all sources available to you, whether that be the internet or some other form of technology, it's your responsibility because democracy only works if you participate.